This video is sponsored by Christoph Frey for excellent Poly Horror Games. Check the link in the description below for some of his works. Previously on Survive the Blackout. Hey. You're strange, Jack. Why? You're like Sarah, but you talk more. <laughs> Shade. And so the journey continues. What's up, y'all? Boogie Knight here, and welcome back to Survive the Blackout Season 2. Uh, when we last left off our cast of rogue miscreants, uh, we had just started out with a new group, started with Jack, the loner, who has a gift, an eye for detail, which has worked pretty well so far with finding various things. We also have Anne, the idealist, and Sarah, the survivalist. We've got really a good crew of um, individuals, and I'm actually really pleased about that. Um, we had to use a little bit of medicine. Well, we gave some medicine away to somebody to kind of keep morale going. We've got four food, two energy drinks, and two things of booze. Um, for those of you guys that are just joining, I actually have a couple of tweaks. Uh, one, I have this on easy mode because, well, this is the third or fourth attempt that um, it'd get into season two um, just through different characters to kind of test things out, and I promptly died very quickly. We can change the difficulty mode from easy to normal to hard whenever we feel like it. So what I'll probably wind up doing is I will be um, changing it when I get a better stash of commodities. Um, I also have disabled quick time events so we can actually experiment a little bit with QTEs without actually being timed for them. So anyways, so obviously health is in decent shape for all of them. Satiety, we're okay. Got plenty of stamina, plenty of morale because we just slept. So let's go ahead and hit the road. We packed up the camp swiftly. The light awaits us. Also, I do want to give a big thank you once again to Baby Bison Games for giving me a key for uh, Survive the Blackout. I'm really enjoying this, and I hope y'all are as well. Um, any kind of feedback you want to give specifically to Baby Bison, let me know in the comments below. Um, I am in touch with them somewhat regularly every now and then. Um, so I will. any kind of feedback you do want to give, I will gladly pass along to them. Anyway, so we approach an old grocery store in the line of a shopping arcade and reeked of abandoned vegetable remains. You know, I think this is something we've dealt with in the past, so we do want to search this because we do need medicine, but any kind of other commodities um, and consumables we can get, we need to. There's not much, so we found some food. Brilliant. Nada. More food. Brilliant. Nothing. Okay. That was easy. Six food. I'll take it. Uh, the old place seemed haunted as, or haunted we as if, the old place seemed haunted we as if the owners go, still roam there waiting for customers. Uh, once again, just to let y'all know, Baby Bison Games is from Sweden, um, so there may be some small translation issues here and there, but it's nothing game-breaking like, say, GD Nomad. So let us be on our merry way. A girl was searching through her backpack, even though... All we could see was her back. We could tell that she was rather young. I think having Anne in our party, this might help. So let's just go ahead and be up front and say hey. The girl immediately got up on her knees, grasping her backpack nervously, ready to run at any moment. She glanced at us angrily. Okay, so we had Sanvi, we could talk. But we do have Anne, so that could work to our benefit. We just want to talk. If she's so edgy, we should leave her alone. Let's see if Anne can do anything. Aha! Uh, the girl smiled and relaxed a little bit when she noticed the cap on Anne's head. The same as hers, she wanted to know what was our business here. We're going to the light, it's not your business. Let's use Anne and say, I'm, I look or I'm looking for my sister. Uh, oh. The girl opened up enough to ask for advice. She was comfortable on her own, but should she go back to her family? There must have been a bigger story behind that. Family is more important if we're talking about Anne. Survivalist, your survival is more impo most important. Loader, you don't have to look at that, or we go specifically to Anne and say, I don't know. This is tough, because I feel like any decision we make is going to impact the morale on them. And each person is different. That's the interesting... I mean, I guess the survivalist and the loader kind of go hand in hand, since Jack would say, you don't have to look for them, and Sarah would say, well, you can survive, but you got to stay alive. Maybe we'll go back there. I'm going to go with I don't know. Because Anne already has a connection. 
It didn't change anything, though, so... The girl was quite secretive. We reminded her of someone she used to be, and as she wondered, maybe she should keep going for that person. Okay, so that was a good neutral answer. I love the graphics on this. I, oh, hello. Okay, this is definitely scripted. Uh, we heard a strange creaking. An electric pole was about to fall. It didn't have to fall towards us or fall at all. It won't fall, move on, or move away from it. Um, yeah, so um, usually when you see blood stains around here, this is what symbols... Or, yeah, signal fall... Signal, wow, I can't talk tonight. This is what usually signals a QTE, and there would be a bar down here quickly um, depleting and... You have to think quickly. I purposely disabled this so when we get into skirmishes, I'm saying when, not if, <clears throat> we will be able to kind of analyze things. So we definitely want to move away from it. So we lost a little bit of morale and a little bit of stamina. We moved away in the very last moment. A minute longer, the pole would fall on one of us. That made us both happy and distressed at the same time. Well, look, it's either we do that or we possibly get killed. Is everyone okay? Yeah, let's do that. Morale went back up. Brilliant. So everything rebounded. Uh, nothing much happened to us, yet we promised ourselves to be more careful in the future. Let us move on. We need medicine at this point. A lone girl was sitting under a tree with a book in her hands. It was an eerie sight in this post-blackout world with all the surrounding turmoil. This almost feels staged. I kind of want to talk to her to see if we could trade. But I feel like if she's just hanging there, we might want to leave her alone. Uh, hang on. Ink a dink, bottle of ink, the cork fell out, and you stink. Not because you're dirty, not because you're clean, but because you kissed the girl behind the magazine. Yeah, go on then. She warned us firmly that we should keep our distance. She'd have time for us only if we wanted to trade. Well, there you go. What do you need? Um, she composed herself and with a strength that we didn't expect from her. She admitted she needed meds and food. She had some energy bars to trade. Let's go and trade food. Okay, so we traded one food and got one energy, so that's okay. Uh, the girl was thankful the resources were going to help her family. She was quite proud that she collected so much for them. Um, let's go ahead and bid her farewell. She disappeared beyond the, behind the horizon. Once again, for those that are just joining us, usually when we close out an instance, these last things do not impact morale or anything like that. It's just kind of our own interpretation. It could have some an impact at the very end, but I have no idea because, well... I've never beaten it. Hence why this is a season two. Well, partly. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's go. It's dangerous. She must be brave. We need to stay strong after the blackout. I usually go for that kind of thing. Oh, hello. We heard disturbance at a distance, but we but knew better than to stop. A while later, we reached a small village. It was a stale. It was in the state of general disrepair. Among the ruins, we found this man. We have to help him. Try to wake him. Something's not right. Let's do something's not right. Led by instinct, we hid in the ruined house. After a moment, we heard the bandits behind the wall. He's still alive, tough son of a bitch. See? This is what helps. We could listen or we could hide farther. Let's go ahead and listen. Morale dropped. Not much, but a little bit. The man let out a short moan and the bandits started cursing at him. One of the thugs hit a wall in anger and we saw particles of dust coming from the ceiling. We have to stay there until we go. Let's leap through the back door. So we lost a little energy. That's okay. I mean, if we really need to, we can set up camp and we could give an energy drink to Sarah or these guys. But we left through the back door, which opened into a dilapidated backyard with a crumbling wall. Suddenly the roof of the building behind us collapsed with a loud rumble, probably burying the thugs. Uh, oh, a crumbling well, not a crumbling wall. Derp. Let's check that. Let's check this well. I feel like there's no reason to... Well, let's check the well. Yes. Oh, we got more food. Brilliant. Uh, the well was dried inside within our reach. We found a hidden package with supplies. Awesome. Still no meds. That's okay. Now, even on easy mode, now you kind of see... And actually, look at that. You can actually see the light in the distance. I really like that. Um... Once again, for those that are just joining us, this is the light, the area, this is the quarry uh, that we need to get to. I would love to get some medicine, like even just one. But once again, now you see, even on easy mode, the importance of supplies and consumables gathering to be used because as the game goes further up, it's gonna become even harder, particularly with the choices I'm gonna be making later on in the season. <laughs> so we finally got to the camp, or rather what was left of it. There was mostly trash around us and 
it seemed like stuff that people left behind as they left this place. So let's check the southern side. Let's check the north. Let's make sure the place is safe. Let's look for a place to rest. I'm pretty sure this area is safe given... Um, I mean, in looking at these choices, it's impacting. We need a place to rest that's going to help our stamina system. So let's go and look for a place. Okay, so stamina's gone up. That's decent. A single barely standing tent caught our attention. As we approached, we figured it must have been the camp infirmary. Maybe we'll find some meds in there? Damn it. Uh, we, we took walked around. I'm guessing we walked around looking for clues and found a discarded plaque with the word quarantine. Art imitates life, I guess. <laughs> uh, discarded packaging for medical supplies all over the place made a grim impression. Maybe we shouldn't dwell here. Yeah, let's go ahead and check and see what's further ahead. Standing up, we noticed several graves of various sizes. Lovely. Was there an epidemic that caused the rest of the camp to move away? This area definitely was scripted, but I can never remember what I've done in the past. I think if we do one thing, we'll find food. But I don't think I've ever found meds here. We have to find them. Maybe we should just give up. No, we're going to find them. Looking around, we found tracks and drag marks leading mostly in one direction. I'm not even going to say it. Uh, there was a chance we would be able, we would be able to follow this trail to wherever these people have gone. Um, give me just one second. Okay, I'm just upping the mic on OBS because once again, uh, between the mic coming from Trilby Cam, I don't have a microphone, um, so on and so forth. I'm trying to talk a little bit louder so I can be heard over the game volume, and which doesn't help with my voice being in state it is. Shut up. It was actually funny because um, I was talking to Ray the other night, and by the end of our conversation, like I just sounded completely trashed here. Um, anyway, a sudden shriek pulled our attention as we were walking in silence, lost in thought. What was that? Let's go there. I feel like this could be a continuation of the bandits, even though they were buried. Um, so we can't wander off a road. That's going to drop morale, so we let's go ahead and go. Whoa, okay. It seemed that we found an abandoned nursery with a playground behind. It must have been filled with kids before the blackout happened. Check the playground, check the building. We should check the building and the off chance we run into bandits. The building was barricaded and covered with graffiti. Okay, so we had bodies. We could try to use force. We don't have it, so let's move on. The wind pushed an empty merry-go-round with chills on our spines. We moved on. Okay, nothing ventured, nothing gained. <clears throat> Are you okay? Yes. No, I miss my family. Sweetie, you waited for them for a few days, right? Right. And when they didn't come, you left them a note before going. Yes. For sure they will read it and come to you, come for you to the light. I do love these little interactions between characters. Sometimes it'll be like, I, I love how Sarah's kind of got a little bit of a motherly figure, and Anne is kind of just the go-to. So I, I kind of like this setup. I think this is my favorite setup so far. We have enough food, so once again, I'm not too concerned about stopping for camp and our... Stamina is doing well. Okay, there was a small town, barely a village along the road. It seemed abandoned, but we could spare the time to search it for supplies or useful items. Okay. Let's go ahead and search one or two buildings. It should be enough. I feel like this is not a good thing. We searched through the first three houses and found nothing useful. As we went deeper into the town, we saw curtains flickering, and some of them, we realized we were being watched. We should hurry up and leave this creepy place. Maybe we should approach one of the clearly inhabited houses. I think we should go ahead and leave. I don't know. I got a bad feeling for that. Oh. We found ourselves at crossroads leading either to farmlands or lakes. Which path should we choose? Okay, now in season one, I went to the lakes. So in the end, in the interest of trying to explore as much as possible, I, we're going to go to the farmlands. I just wish we had medicine. So on to the farmlands we go. We beat level one, y'all. Shkol. New region, farms. <clears throat> Uh, farmlands, among all other regions, had the biggest chance to be the least intact after the blackout. This makes sense. So hopefully we'll find a few things. Let's do this. The lake was interesting. This farm looked way better than most of the others we had passed. It was well maintained. We saw four figures outside on the porch. They were probably a mother and three sons. We can come up to them, we can pass by them, and let's see what Anne has to say when this lady looks nice. A lot of the times I rely on what the characters do because that usually works to our advantage. 
The woman took a liking to Anne and was worried about her well-being on the road. She introduced herself as Natalie and asked for our names, calling Anna Sweetie. Anne, I am not a kid. Could you tell us what's going on? Don't call her Sweetie. Let's go ahead and just ask what's going on. Let's keep it civil. Natalie's story was hopeful. She and her sons brought the community together and were trying to restore the order in the area. Blackout did a number on them, making their attempts very hard. Sounds too good to be true or count us in. This will do morale, so let's say count us in. The woman smiled. They needed help long term, and we explained that we didn't want to linger. She was grateful for the offer, but there was nothing immediate that we could help with. Okay, let's move on then. Damaged silos were leaning menacingly on the side of the road. The massive structures must have been an important storage site for nearby farms. Now they were just dead looking pillars. I mean, we could go there. I mean, I don't think we're going to find any meds, but we might find some more food. Okay, so we lost some more stamina. Approaching the silos, we saw one of them had collapsed. Its bounty spread everywhere. Some of the grains seem to be moving, moving though. Check the grain if it's still good. Check what's moving. This is suspicious. We should go look if there's anyone around. Let's go and look. Okay, so we lost more. Great. Uh, we wandered around the place, but it seemed utterly deserted. There's a thick layer of dust on the furniture and floor of the office. We found rodent droppings and a couple of mice. Let's look around the office. Our search produced mainly dust clouds that made us cough. We only found a short note mentioning someone named Hank. An illness, rodents, and a farm meetup point with K. Maybe we should take the advice. There surely isn't anything to worry about here. Let's go and take the advice. Okay, so morale dropped the ha a mite. The rats plaguing this place might have driven the people away. We fought the urge to scratch nervously and hit the road again. Okay. These things happen, but, you know, a shot in the dark is still a shot. <clears throat> a girl crying sat there under a tree. She looked utterly devastated. Why is she here? Uh, well, we can't do anything, so I'm guessing this might be this mystery character that we haven't a clue who that person is. So let's go ahead and observe. Oh. The girl noticed us and begged for help with such desperation in her voice at, that it moved us deeply. Only seconds later before we could even react, she jumped at us with a knife. Sarah, take it away. Uh, the Sarah reacted immediately, pulling her to the ground. The girl howled and jumped to retreat. That is why I disabled QTE so we can check this out for ourselves. And we do, Sarah lost a little health, not much. Uh, this abandoned building gave us chills on the spine. Uh, the wind howled as if there were some ghosts trapped there. There are no ghosts. Let's go and search. People got crazy. The school was closed. We are low on food, and Mother says we should head to Uncle Rob's house. I don't like him. Last Christmas, he stared at me strangely. Oh. A knife. Okay. We don't have anything, so we can't do anything there. Nothing. Bobkiss. Let's... Oh, we got a cane. We need to get out. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and hit camp then. Because... I want to look at something. Bear with me one second. So, Anne... Wrote trusty knife with a wooden handle. Super for close combat and cutting things down. Let's go ahead and equip the knife for Sarah. I know the cane decreases fatigue while walking, and we should give the cane to. Because I think she loses stamina quicker, being the youngest one out of all of us. Jack's still in pretty good shape. Um, We're still okay on satiety. I mean, there's no need to rest, and there's no need to eat. So I think we're going to go a little bit further before we set up camp. We've still got the silos in the background. That is so cool. I love it. Walking in the fog, we realized that we are lost. The light was nowhere to be seen. We should discuss this. Uh, let's keep moving. We'll eventually find it. Let's go ahead and discuss this. Morrow's probably going to drop. That's okay. I think we should scout for the right path first. We argued a bit about what we should do. The fog was thick and put every one of us on edge. We have to find a way. Sarah? Take it away. Hey, she's happy. She's Oh, that is so cute. I love it. It's like... That is a cute expression. It took Sarah a while, but she was able to orient us towards the light. Good work. Let's move. <laughs> that is really cute. Yeah, they're subtle. Okay, we were watching the road when we spotted a group of people in the distance coming our way. Hey, 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 that's the season one thumbnail. The strangers haven't seen us yet. Sarah, what do you think? We should stay hidden. We shouldn't take any unnecessary risks. 
Uh, we should signal them. We should send Sarah to take a closer look. Yeah, go on then. So she lost a little satiety, so we might want to stop and have us a rest and some food. Sarah reported that the Wanderers were not armed, and they seemed to look like travelers. They seemed a bit lost. We could get some meds, so let's call out to them. Strangers hesitantly approached us. They were lost and only trying to find a path leading to the light. What should we do? Tell them no about nothing or share with what we know. Morale goes even more up. Wanderers were grateful for every bit of info we shared. They wished us luck on our way, and we parted. We did something good today. All right, let's go ahead and sleep and then eat. So we're going to go ahead and take a short nap. Health went up and... F okay. And now... Hmm? Nope. Ladies first. Anne? You hungry? I don't know why I just did that southern voice. So we're good with that. That should last us for a spell. Damn! Home girl can eat. And then Jack? Food. Yes. Okay, so this should hold us for a little bit now. Let's hit the road. <clears throat> Whoa. Not thinking much, we went on the roadside when we realized that we stepped into something. A few seconds, steps later, the angry buzzing followed. Wasps, we should run. Run. We managed to avoid most of the wasp stings and run away safe. We took a little bit of a chunk of everything, but that's okay. Let's check up the stings. We should. There were quite a few stings, but it could have been worse, but we don't have any meds. We'll have to manage. Damn it. Stings hurt, but we decided to move on. We need medicine. Moving along the fields, we noticed a small herd of cows. They were grazing on the overgrown patch of grass, but seemed nervous when they saw us. They must have escaped a nearby farm. Let's go ahead and observe them. Looking closer, we saw that the herd was gathered around one cow and its calf protecting them. The young one seemed barely able to stand. I mean, we could attack them with the knife, but there's really no point, so let's just watch them again. We saw a faltering calf fall. It didn't get back up, and its mother started lowing in pain. That actually is a word. Was it sick? If that was the case, we shouldn't touch the animals or try and kill them for meat. Poor animals. Yeah. See, so it all pays in a while, after a while. We passed the same tree for the third time. We realized we're lost. Hooray. We also noticed that there was an extra set of tracks on the ground. It didn't match any of ours. Let's follow the trail. We heard two low voices on the road in front of us talking about some camp and its leaders. It sounded like they could be from the place we were looking for. Let's hide and try to listen in. We hid and listened in on the men remaining unnoticed. They were sent to look for other camp members... But one of them was unhappy about it. He thought the camp leader was wasting their time. There's dissent in the ranks? Interesting. Let's listen a little bit more. Uh, it seemed like the camp was in poor shape. Bandits kept stealing resources and hunger was rampant. We kept our distance and left after learning where the new campsite was. Okay, so this is Frank then we're talking about. Good, good. A stray dog came up to us knee high. Didn't look very dangerous. Maybe it lost its owner. Scared away. Wait a little bit. Wait, the owner might be somewhere close. Let's wait a little bit. We waited, but no one else was around. And... Let's go ahead and call it. The dog didn't trust us enough to come closer. We saw it hesitate, but caution prevailed. The dog was pretty skinny. Call it again. The owner approached us cautiously. It looked healthy. It saw a collar on. Maybe the owner was around. Something... Maybe perhaps something happened to them. Pet it and check the collar. When we moved our hands toward the dog, it jumped back and looked at us with big brown eyes as if it wanted to tell us something. Where do you want to go, buddy? Or it's just a, it's not just a dog. Show us. We followed the dog as it wandered off the road and into the bushes, except for a few ticks. There was nothing there was not there should not be anything worse in there. Let's go on. We found a feverish man laying in a spot practically invisible from the road. He was in bad shape and the fire offering him warmth had almost died. The dog immediately ran to his side. Look around, help him. We should check first. The man's only possessions were a sleeping bag and a backpack. The man was feverish and didn't seem aware of our presence. There was no trace of anybody there. Let's kindle the fire first. As we tried to kindle the fire, the dog started whining. We checked on the man and he was gone. Damn it. In his hand was a photo of a young woman. 
At least he had the dog at his side. We tried. Some of these things are lose-lose, to be honest with y'all. And it sucks. We came closer and saw some quite impressive store resembling a small shopping mall. The upper floor even had windows, as if this building was more fortunate than others. Uh, go around or go inside? Let's go around. As we go around, we saw the store's warehouse wasn't breached, yet the door still wasn't forced. We have neither. Damn it. We don't have time. We didn't want to strain our luck and left. The ghost of this place shouldn't be disturbed. <sighs> now I'm getting antsy with resources. Oh, hello. We found a torst. We've had a torsty. A torn up dusty backpack. Good lord. It must have been here for a while. Some of its contents spilled on the road. There was also an awful stench coming from somewhere nearby. Uh, let's check the backpack. Someone already dug through it. Um, and they were looking for something specific. They left a notebook and a number of other items. Let's search further. Morale went up. Hey! We found a compass in a hidden compartment for a moment. Its needle stood still showing north. But then it started spinning around and then pointed another direction. Jack, what do we got? Jack examined the backpack to him and looked as if someone bought it from a military surplus before the blackout. The compass should have been broken, but there was no damage. Let's go. The compass needle was spinning like mad. It was clear that the tool was useless. Let's go. It's all because of the blackout. Remember, we can't trust anyone. It's the world we live in now. Ah, hell. As we walked through some small towns, some thugs approached us from a side alley. They surrounded us in orders to give us all we had. We should surrender, fight with the bigger group, break through by fighting with a smaller group. Let's go and fight the bigger group. Ah, hell. We attacked the stronger group, but the rest of the bandits attacked us from behind, kicked, beaten, and we wondered if we'd make it alive. In the end, they left us alone. We would. We have to be strong. We have to be wiser in the future. Okay? Let's go and do one more instance, and then we'll take a rest. Sudden barking brought us back from our thoughts. An overgrown dog ran towards us with his owner behind him. The animal looked like one of those breeds used to protect and fight. Let's wait for the owner to speak. We didn't look that suspicious to the man, so he warned us about a pack of stray dogs prowling around. Thank you for your advice. The man appreciated our honesty, which became rare after the blackout. He moved on with the dog at his side. Okay, we're going to... We're gonna rest, because I think, I believe a long sleep will help our health, even though I don't want to, you know what, hang on, let's go one more instance. Who is this Victor? Really? We found an abandoned shop with an untouched entrance to the apartments above. Even though this place looked peaceful, the building itself made a rather grim impression. We have to go in. As we came closer, we noticed old signs of force entry. Whoever did this must have been long gone. We have to look for meds. Use of everyday medicine used to keep illness at bay. Maybe the owner left for search for more. After the blackout, it will be difficult to get resupply. Nothing. Hey, we need that. We heard some rustle behind the door. It was a strange sound, a bit like claws clapping on the floor. Let's leave that alone. We heard some barking, but we already made our minds. Someone would come for this animal for sure. Nothing. Hide. Damn it. This is what happens with a QTE. Like I said, when we hit that certain point, we're kind of buggered. We sat in the closet for an hour. We had to listen to them bragging about murdering someone with all the gory details. And then they had finally left us alone. It was horrible. We have to stick together. See, that's what happens when the danger meter goes full. So I'm not too salty about that. Um, okay. Our satiety's dropped. We have to rest. Long sleep. See, our health went up a little bit, and now we have to eat. You slept like a baby, even though you slept for quite some time, you feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose all of our food. Mm -hmm. So now we need food, and we need meds. Now you see what's going on with this. But I've been playing for about 30 minutes, so we're going to go a few more instances and see if we can find something. Or maybe even get to the camp. Again? Oh wait, hang on. A sudden commotion in front of us woke us all from our thoughts. Loud cries and shouts were coming fast towards us. What shall we do? Check carefully. It sounds like trouble. Run. 
We didn't run too far as we almost fell over a freshly dead body. A stabbed man with blood still flowing. What shall we do? It's not our business. Run. The smell of alcohol followed us, but we managed to run from the men. Would never forget what we saw that day. Kind of feel like I missed the lakes. Oh, damn it. Hang on. Uh, we missed a trail of leaflets on the road. What is this? Follow the trail. What, what is this? I don't like this. Crumbled and handwritten. The leaflet called all that felt lost after the blackout to come to some kind of religious meeting where they could receive help. Lost souls? What is that? Smells of religion? Strange. Let's go ahead and say lost souls. Their faith accepted all in need and provided shelter in the spirit of goodwill and cooperation. This organization must have a lot of supplies to feed everyone. Let's go. Uh, hang on. We need to go back to camp for one second. Because we did get the crowbar... So we should give that to Jack. So now everybody has something equipped. Now we can hit the road. As we were coming up on a hill ahead, we felt a strange... I felt a strange odor? What shall we do? Let's go ahead and come closer. Morale dropped. I expected that. It could have been an ambush. No, why? I won't get used to that sight even though I saw it too many times. As we climbed up the hill, a solitary grave emerged. There were several bodies laid out in the open, behind it, lower in the valley. Judging by the stench, they had been there a while. Okay, so if we rob the bodies, we're gonna lose... You know what? Yo. Damn it. Stupid. 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 This half-burned mansion surely has seen better days. What remained looked like a sad reminder of its former glory. We have to. We need meds. Good lord. Hey! Booze? Nothing. 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 Oh, we got one med thing. That's good news. I'll take it. We heard flies buzzing, and someone started thinking about a previous encounter. The bodies rotting in, in the open open over a grave. The flies, the stench. We, would we end up like one of those two? What is wrong with people? They weren't vigilant. We can't be surprised like that. Just walk, no overthinking. They weren't vigilant. The people on the hill were probably completely surprised by the attack. They didn't fight back. Jack says it's nothing new. For Jack... Oh, so we got some backstory now. For Jack, the black had only brought out the rot that was boiling under the surface. This was like another war. Now remember, Jack did become a war photographer. Um, he only wished the black would bring out the best in us, not the worst. We'll go ahead and do one more instance. Something glistened in the grass nearby. What is it? Let's pick it up. Oh no. We didn't go too far. Several policemen walked to us. They still had their guns and looked as if they were up to no good. Pull out. So we tried to escape. They made us kneel. They laughed and promised that disobedience would be punished with death. Look for a way out. Ouch. There was no way out. Jack was a, a person of color. Took a few punches. In the meantime, they went through our things. Pray they won't harm us. We lost everything. An older man appears in the distance, strolling towards the house. We shouldn't have done that. Scout the place. The house looked as if time stopped here 30 years ago. Was that when he was in his prime? We could hear him humming an old melody. Yeah, let's sneak in the back. Between the barn and the house, Sarah found a shallow basement used as a pantry. Go through the stuff. Hey, we got three food. Good. We could give Jack some booze. No. We found some cans. The man surely didn't need all that food, right? That's what we told ourselves as we stole his supplies. Let's go. A strange pair approached us. A bit timid at first. Desperately tried to start a, start a friendly chatter as if they had something in mind. Let's listen to them. We have to go on. Rob, this probably is the cult, but let's go ahead and listen. The two brightened up. We started a small talk, but soon moved on to their religion. With visible neophyte zeal, they stated that their faith explained the blackout. Politely changed the topic. After several failed attempts to change the subject back to their faith, they finally bid us a sad farewell. It seemed like they pitied us. Maybe it's for the better. A drunk man was sleeping on the side of the road ahead of us. Being downwind, we could smell the awful stench emanating from him. 
We should. We need something. We found Emily empty booze bottles. The stench around the man was ten times worse, and we started wondering who would puke first. If he has a story to tell, let's just get going. As we were leaving, he came to and grabbed one of us by the hand, exhaling a beastly dose of half-processed alcohol. He screamed that we would soon join him here and started laughing. Leave us alone. Alas, we were the ones who tried robbing him. A sad, down-on-his-luck and lonely man. Did we not have any conscience? He decided he should just leave us to process that, and he did just that. Probably others pushed him into this. Let's not follow his footsteps. You're strange, Jack. Why? You're like Sarah, but you talk more. <laughs> We came across an elderly man searching through car wrecks. His clothes had seen better times. Let's talk to him. We might get some information. Yeah. The man raised his hands and explained that he just wanted to live undisturbed in a place where he and his wife used to live. He offered to show us a quick path through the rubble. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey. Maybe there's still hope in people. He should have left. It's a terrible place to stay. He was nice. The path he had shown us was definitely the easiest. We were glad that we listened to him and saved a lot of time and energy. He didn't gain anything from sharing info with us. Not all strangers are hostile. It's true. Alright, one more instance. Oh, Gwyn's breath. It was a long journey, but we finally found Frank's camp. We hoped it to be a haven, but what we saw was dreary. It was filled with people suffering from, from, strange, from some strange illness. Let's take a break. Let's talk to the people. Let's just look for Frank. Let's talk to the people. The camp was held together by Frank, but the last few weeks were tough, meds were running low, and more and more people were getting seriously ill. Some only waited for death. Don't they have many medical help? Let's keep our distance. Maybe we can help these people. We should just find Frank. People whispered, a doctor was supposed to come with the cure for them all. Was it our doctor? He never mentioned or showed us anything resembling a miracle serum. Let's just go to find Frank's tent. Frank's tent was a bit larger than others, but it wasn't any better wasn't in any better state than others. We approached it with hesitation, not sure what we'd see inside. We entered the tent to meet Frank. The camp leader eyed us carefully, then explained that he was expecting someone else. He seemed disappointed. Uh, he didn't make it. We're sorry. He told us to find you. Frank chuckled. Did you expect our haven? Did you expect our haven would look like this? He asked. The doctor was supposed to help them with an illness that used to be easily treatable before the blackout. It's huge responsibility. Any problems? Let's go with Jack. Frank froze disturbed. Without his wife Carla, he wouldn't be able to carry on. She was everything to him, and now dying to a disease that was easily cured pre-blackout. Maybe we should just leave him? What about the promised help? All Frank could do was let you stay the night. Without the doctor, things would have things have changed. He had to take care of his people. It's, we understand it's difficult, but the doctor said you owe him that. Say nothing. We understand. Frank hesitated, but stood his ground. He knew he promised the doctor any help he would need and didn't like going back on his word. There were enough reasons for him to say no, however. Uh, oh no. Yeah, let's go with Anne. Oh no. Frank took a long look at Anne's worried expression and something changed in him. He reached into a box, grabbing a small bundle that he handed to Anne. He turned back to his hiding his face. Thank you. At the moment, a woman entered the tent tent or ten and hugged Frank. It was his wife who seemed pale and exhausted. Apparently she already knew about the doctor's demise. Are you okay? She wasn't willing to share, saying that, quote, it was nothing, unquote. Frank looked worried as we were leaving. They started arguing. We heard mention of making sacrifices to others. We should go. Frank let us stay in one of his spare tents. The camp was unusually quiet as people didn't say much. Fear in the air was almost physical. Such tragedy. We can't trust them. They had proven their strength. Such tragedy. We pitied them. Those people lost in a glimpse of an eye what they managed to rebuild after the blackout. They seemed hopeless going back on force, going on for by force of habit. Anne? Anne couldn't believe it. She thought it would be different like it used to be before the blackout. Consumed by thoughts, she didn't spill a single spill a word until she got to sleep with a single good night. Let's go to sleep. We lay down listening to the camp's quiet hum, and we fall asleep. Oh, there we go. We are back, baby. 
We decided to spend the night at the camp and use the chance to get a proper rest. As we sat down, we heard a noise coming from Frank's tent. Let's go there and see what's going on. We should leave. It sounds like trouble. Yeah, we have to. People were outraged. Frank's wife, Carla, died suddenly this morning. Some were speculating that we were somehow involved. Before anyone did anything, though, Frank approached us. Anne, I'm scared. Frank looked at Anne as if he saw her for the first time. We didn't bring the doctor, but we brought bad luck. Maybe we should leave. As we were about to leave, Frank announced loudly that, quote, Lady Luck is a fickle mistress and tends to turn on her. Their favorites, that felt threatening. Let's go faster. Relieved we left the camp behind us, still hearing the uproar that this death caused. We were hoping that this was our last meeting for those people. We're back on the road, finally. Let's go ahead and set up camp. Because this is probably as good of a place as any to stop. We're coming to the end of this next region, I surmise. I feel like the Frank's camp was kind of a road, a sign that we're coming to the end of this next level. But we're making good ground. We still have no meds, we have food, and our energy levels are back up to where they should be. So I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, we're making good progress. Um, definitely enjoying this still, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it as well. You know, let me know what you guys think. Um, what would you have done? What wouldn't you do? Uh, would you be more aggressive with the robbing or maybe with the investigations? Um, what do you like that I'm doing? What don't you like that I'm doing? What do you like about this game? And what do you like about Baby Bison? Please let me know. I read every comment and I try to reply to every comment. And if there's some constructive feedback you want to give to BBG, let me know and I will forward it on to them. So once again, a big thank you to Baby Bison Games for the code. I'm super liking this and I hope that my playthrough is doing it justice. Um, so with that being said, before I call it a night, if you like the Boogie Night Project and you want to find out more, I do have a Twitter page as well as a public Discord channel and links to both those are in the description below, as well as a link to my temporarily defunct Twitch page. And hey, <coughs> if you are interested in doing a little bit more for the Boogie Night Project, excuse me, I do have a Patreon where for as little as a dollar a month you get access to exclusive content such as the patron-only section of my Discord as well as patron-exclusive uploads that go up every Saturday per week and I am taking patron requests. And know that all the money goes towards me getting a better computer for starters, more RAM so I can maybe put a poultice on things and soon enough a new computer and after that um, a new micro, an actual microphone and a headset, so the audio quality will be better. And that's where 100% of the proceeds go, so if you are interested in doing a little bit for the Boogie Night Project, that is the best way to do it. And a big, big, massive, massive thank you to my incredibly attractive patrons. My gratitude knows no bounds, and you guys are incredible. So otherwise, I hope y'all have a fantastic evening, and I will catch y'all on the flip side, alright? Peace. Hey y'all, while my gratitude knows no bounds for every single bit of love and support y'all have shown for me over the years, there are a few people that I legitimately want to take a few minutes to thank for their unending help and support. Uh, first of all, obviously Christoph Frey, not just for being a sponsor of the Boogie Night Project, but also for letting me use his music from Gabba Transistor for in my streams, as well as him kind of coming up with his own little fragment for my new introduction to my, um, the Boogie Night Project. And speaking of introductions, the intro, as well as my YouTube banner page, um, were done by the amazing Oren. You might know him as Oren VDK, as well as Oren from Couple K. Cakes. Thank you so much, Oren. I really do appreciate the time you took to put together everything from the banner to the beautifully done introduction that merged perfectly with Christoph's music from Gabba Transistor. So big thank you to them. And also, this would not be possible with the help of my extremely amazing patrons, both current and former, uh, such as Lexi Kitty, Silverleaf, Barry Grave, Harkov, Jeray, Larian, and Oren, as well as a few others that have come and gone over the years. Y'all, this would not be possible without your help and your support. Um, I know I have not been able to provide much in the way of um, uh, giving back in Patreon rewards, but I am in the process of revamping my Patreon as well as the rewards that I can do, so be prepared. Um, I know I joke about it, uh, saying that if you're morbidly fascinating, check it out, but if you do want to give um, to the Boogie Night Project, that is the easiest way to do so, and I am legitimately setting aside funds to buy more hardware for my computer, 
backgrounds, as well as making things look more professional. But once again, very big thank you all to everybody who has supported me from the beginning all the way to the present, um, as well as those individuals that have gone out of their way to help. So once again, guys, thank you so much for all your constant love and support. My gratitude knows no bounds, and I'll catch you on the flip side. All right? Peace.